another installment of Video Game Battle with me, Zookstar, where I take two games, compare them with each other, and at the end decide which game is the superior game, whether they have similarities to each other, or just comparing an original game to its sequel. So without question, let's bring out tonight's competitors! Bugs Bunny Lost in Time versus Bugs and Taz Time Busters now I know what you're thinking. Why are you comparing two Looney Tunes games? Looney Tunes games suck ass! Well yeah, it's true that most of the video games based on the Looney Tunes are crap, but these two are major exceptions, not to mention some of the best platformers for the PS1 just behind Crash and Spyro. But the question is, which of these two do I prefer? The original or the sequel? Well to find out, let's get this battle started. Let's begin with the usual. Bugs Bunny Lost in Time story begins with Bugs Bunny going on a trip to Pismo Beach, but accidentally makes a wrong turn and instead ends up in a factory. There he finds a machine and thinks it's a carrot dispenser. After switching it on, it turns out to be a time machine, which ends up in a strange spooky place called Nowhere. He then meets a sorcerer named Marilyn, who tells Bugs that he needs to collect time clocks from each time error, which will help him get back to the present. Bugs and Taz Time Buster story has Daffy Duck as an exterminator called by Granny to help get rid of one of the rats in her house. Finding the rat on top of Granny's time regulator, Daffy tries to catch it, but instead breaks the time regulator which sends Daffy back in time. After being awakened by one of the time gears falling in his rabbit hole, Bugs Bunny pops out and sees people from different time eras going apeshit in modern time. Bugs then accidentally ends up in Granny's house by Taz, where she convinces Bugs to find all the time gears from different time errors, and also sends Taz to join along with Bugs to help him on his quest. So which story is superior? Well to me, it's Bugs and Taz Time Busters. Sure, Lost in Time's story did have more to do with time travelling, but Time Buster's story has Bugs and Taz chasing after Daffy to get back the time gem, which is more fitting for a Looney Tunes game, at least in my opinion. So point one goes to Time Busters, let's move on to the level designs. Since both games are about time travelling, they both have time period based levels. Bugs Bunny Lost in Time has many time period levels like the Stone Age, the Pirate Years, the 1930s, the Medieval Times and the Dimension X. Every one of these levels has a Looney Tunes villain that you will confront as you progress through the game and each of these characters do fit well with the time period they are in. Bugs and Taz Time Busters on the other hand has different time period levels like the Aztec level, the Viking level, the Arabian level and the Translivia level. Like Lost in Time, each level has a familiar Looney Tunes character playing as the antagonist. This one's an easy pick for me. I'm gonna go for Lost in Time's designs. Lost Time Busters did have more improved visuals. Some of the levels it had were kinda generic and bland, and it didn't feel much like Looney Tunes. Lost in Time on the other hand has levels based on some of the best classic Looney Tunes episodes, and even the loading screen will tell you which episode it's based on. So this point is going to Lost in Time pans down. Now now let's look at the music. Bugs Bunny Lost in Time has music which feels like it was from 1960s Looney Tunes episodes. <laughs> As Time Buster's music on the other hand has more deeper and more atmospheric tones to it to suit the environments of the levels more. So which soundtrack is better? Well, I'm gonna give this to Lost in Time again, mainly because I find the tunes in the game to be more catchy and memorable than Time Busters. Time Busters atmospheric music was nice to listen to, but when it came to levels like the Royal Gardens, where there's a lot of things to collect, the music sometimes gives me a headache listening to it every 5 seconds. But Lost in Time avoids that problem by giving it a more catchier soundtrack, which does not give you a headache when doing these long levels. So with that said, Lost in Time earns another point, and we we move on to boss fights. 
Both games have boss fights which have you battling many of the Looney Tunes characters. Lost in Time has Elmer Fudd in the Stone Age, Yosemite Sam in the Pirate Years, Rocky and Muggsy in the 1930s, Hazel the Witch and Robin Hood Daffy Duck in the Medieval Times, and Marvin the Martian in Dimension X. Time Busters has Yosemite Sam in the Aztec Era, Elmer Fudd in the Viking Era, Baba Chop in the Arabian Era, and Count Blood Count in the Translivia level. So which boss fights do I prefer? Well, you may not agree with me, but I have to go with Time Busters boss fights. Sure, Lost in Time did have more Looney Tunes characters to fight and it felt more slapstick, but the boss fights can finish pretty damn quickly. The only way that the boss fights will be longer is if you suck at them, but Time Busters bosses are more longer and epic as you have both Bugs and Taz to use to fight them, so Time Busters ends at second point. And now we come to the final round, gameplay. Let's begin with Lost in Time. Lost in Time's gameplay is similar to Banjo-Kazooie and Spyro the Dragon, where you have non-linear levels to select in a hub world and have a certain number of collectibles. As shown in the intro of the game, the main collectibles in the game are time clocks. These clocks can be earned by finding them in a hidden spot, completing a small minigame, collecting a certain number of golden carrots, and breaking a number of Atme boxes that are scattered around each level. If you manage to collect a certain number of clocks, then the game will tell you that you have unlocked a new level. The levels in the game are very long, which means the checkpoints in the game can be used as save points so you can start the game where you left off the next time you play the game. Bugs has numerous abilities like kicking, jumping, hovering, rolling, tiptoeing, picking up objects and throwing them, pushing large objects, and diving into rabbit holes. Bugs' health in the game are three carrots which can be regenerated by collecting carrots that are usually scattered in a lot of the areas. However, there are times when you'll need to visit Merlin to get a new ability, because there are some levels that require a certain ability to unlock. These abilities include unlocking doors, summoning platforms, and even waking a bird to carry you to certain locations out that are out of reach. Despite the praise, however, there are a lot of levels in this game that really frustrated me. One of them that rings a bell is the Planet X Files, where it has that annoying ass robot that can freeze you and throw you back to square one in the level. Another level I disliked was the chasing level with Rocky and Muggsy. As a kid, I never completed the level due to always crashing into objects and vehicles, which really really got on my nerves. But the worst level of all is the speed space speedway. Why? Because of that guessing game at the end of the level, which is damn near impossible to beat. And I have not once completed this level because it's so goddamn tedious, even as a teenager. So that's pretty much all I have to say about Lost in Time. Now on to Time Busters. Time Busters, since it's the sequel to Lost in Time, it shares similar gameplay. Bug still has his moves from Lost in Time, and Taz has abilities like his signature spin to attack, activate switches and create rabbit holes for bugs to jump in. You can switch between bugs and Taz at any time and some of them to get into the same location as you. The co-op feature really is a welcome addition and it is comfortable to get grips with. Like Lost in Time, you can get new moves by visiting Granny, like bouncing on Taz's head, Taz picking up bugs to throw him to certain locations, Taz's scary face, Bugs' super roll, and shooting carrots out of out of place enemies. The main collectibles in the game are now time gears, which collecting them will give you a certain number of gears like 1, 5, 10, 15 and 25. These gears can be earned by co just collecting them in the open area, co completing a small mini game, smashing the acme boxes again and hitting characters lost in time. Another important item to collect are boss medallions. You can get these boss medallions by completing a tough challenge and once you have all three of them, the game will invite you to the next level and then the, the boss fight of that level. My major complaint with the game however is that there are only four hub worlds, but each of these hub worlds can take a lot of hours to complete 100%. The only levels I wasn't fond of in the game was the Baboon Realm and the Haunted River. This level is a cluster of whirlpools, crocodiles and moving spears. This level really stumped me because if you get hit once in this level you'll have to go back to square one. So if you dare fuck up just once you have to restart all the way back to the beginning. God this was a hell of an annoying level. So if you're a Looney Tunes fan, I would strongly recommend both games, but if you had to torture me so badly to make me say which game do I prefer, you may not agree with me, but I have to say Bugs and Taz Time Busters, mainly because I love the co-op feature that they put in this game, and for a platformer, it works really well. I still love Bugs and Bunny Lost in Time, but there were more levels in Lost in Time I disliked, outnumbering the ones in Time Busters.
So the winner is Bugs and Taz Time Busters. That's all folks, uh, I mean, that wraps up another video game battle. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.